Hi everyone and welcome to Shaluso. And today we are of course talking about the new Alang Eonzerne Odysseus, their new stainless steel sports model that's been rumored for a really long time and has just been released. Now this video is just going to be a first impressions video. I haven't handled it in person yet, so I'm largely going to focus just on a little bit of the technical aspects of it and then also the aesthetics and a little bit about its positioning in the market. So let's get right into it. Right off the bat, it is of course everything you'd expect from a stainless steel sports model in 2019. It's made in stainless steel, has a relatively integrated bracelet, I'll talk more about that later. It has a movement that's designed for active use, not Rish and Meal style, but for general active use, 120 meter water resistance, everything you'd expect from a company like Alain and Zöne, and everything you'd expect from a stainless steel sports watch in 2019. But let's take a look at the highlights of this watch. Now first and foremost, I have to highlight the movement in this watch. There was a lot of concern from people when they were talking about the rumors of this watch that because it was going to be a more entry level piece, it's going to be a sports watch, which isn't really Lange's main thing, it's not really what they do. There was a lot of concern that they might actually do some cost cutting on the movement to help it be more attainable. Thankfully, they've done nothing of the sort. Not only have they resisted the temptation to pick one of their existing movements and just put it in there, they've designed from the ground up a brand new movement, one that's tailored to suit the character of this watch, and that I mean it has a full balance bridge so that it's more shock resistant. They changed the beat rate to 28,800 VPH so it's a little bit more accurate and more reliable in that sense. Has a 50 odd hour power reserve, it's automatic. They made sure that functionally it matched the character of the watch, but more importantly it matches the character of Lange as a brand, and that's in the decoration. It still has those beautiful glacite stripes in the German silver, and with that new balance bridge they've still decorated it to the same level of quality, they've still engraved it to the same level of quality that they do on all of their other watches. It's hand engraved, though in this case they've opted for a wave pattern instead of a more floral pattern. So in that sense, they haven't skimped at all, and I think that's amazing. That's really important for Lange as a brand to make sure they made something that was still true to their brand before you even get into the model. The next highlight is that it doesn't look like a Royal Oak or a Nautilus. Again, a lot of concern that because it was entering this market at this time, people thought they're just pandering, and there was some worry, especially when you consider the last few stainless steel sports watch releases from Chopard and Bell & Ross, there was a lot of concern that they would just try and ape the design of the two iconic classics of this class. Thankfully, they've done nothing of the sort. It doesn't really look like either the Royal Oak or the Nautilus, so that's a great advantage. And they've gone one further. They introduced a day-date complication on this, which is something neither of those offer. And also the clasp has a push-button adjuster with seven millimeters of incremental adjustment. Again, something not featured on the Royal Oak or Nautilus of the Holy Trinity. The closest one to feature that is Vacheron Constantin, but they use a different mechanism and it doesn't have that same level of micro adjustment and precision. So definitely points to them for making sure that they didn't copy AP or Patek and also that they introduced some new elements that those two hadn't into the segment. And then the last few design highlights, well, I love that they have the integrated pushers into the look. Some people don't like it because it makes it look asymmetrical. What I like more than anything is the fact that these don't look like pushers off the bat, so it fits within the design. Say what you will about the asymmetry, you can't deny they've hit them well, and I really like that. Also, I do like how the layout that they've done with the day date, of course it has the typical lange big date, but also it does kind of look like the Zeitwerk in the sense of it has that symmetrical design of a display on the left, display on the right, and small seconds at the center. So points to them for harking back to one of their other models, especially one of their best looking models. So those are the highlights of the watch, but now let's talk about some of the negatives of the Odysseus. And most of these are going to be aesthetic because I can't really fault the movement, and without having held it, I can't really talk too much about the fit on the wrist or anything like that. So the negatives of this design. While I said yes it is great that it doesn't look like a Royal Oak or a Nautilus, I do find that the design is a bit underwhelming. Both of those watches, one of their key highlights was the fact that they were something totally unique. They were something outgoing, they were a really audacious attempt at a new design, whereas this feels very conservative. When I first looked at it, I said this feels like a Raymond Vial. I couldn't quite put my finger on why I got that impression until I went on Raymond Vial's website and I found The Freelancer, which was released in 2007. Now I'm not saying that they purposely tried to ape this design, 
But I think in their effort to not make it a royal oak or a nautilus, they went so conservative that they accidentally made it look like another much more conservative watch. So that I feel is definitely a downside. This would have been a great opportunity when you consider that Lange has made some really, really interesting looking watches. Things like the Lange 1, the Zeitwerk, the uh, 1815 Chronograph. They all look so amazing and so distinctive. With this, I feel like they just missed the mark in making it look a little bit more interesting, despite all the interesting things going on in the movement and in terms of the new complication and Lange as a brand as well. Also, when it comes to the bracelet integration, when you see where the bracelet meets the case, it just looks disproportionately wide, in my opinion. It looks like they've put a coin on a thick bracelet. So that's something where I feel they could have executed better. Perhaps it will look better on a strap. Time will only tell when we see more pictures and more variants of it. But that's again something where I feel they kind of missed the mark aesthetically. And then the last thing is the clasp. Again, while I praise the fact that they do have proper micro adjustment on it, this clasp, it looks like it was fit for another bracelet. I have the same criticism for the Jubilee bracelet on the GMT with its oyster clasp. It just doesn't really match. So I feel like they could have maybe found a better solution for that. But unfortunately, I think because they had a bit of a rush to make this watch because of all the steel sports watch craze, I think maybe they sped up the process a little bit by doing something a little bit simpler functionally better but perhaps not aesthetically better but at this price point you expect everything to be perfect on both a functional and an aesthetic point so that's something where i feel they could have made improvements but that being said overall i think this is a great watch and it presents a lot of really cool opportunities for lange as a brand a few that i would like to see in future first off that dial while i do criticize it for being a bit conservative it's only a few steps away from being really fun i think they could have a lot of fun with different sector dials maybe make maybe something with like a roulette a roulette date and you know black and white on the sectors make it like a casino edition this watch is supposed to target a segment of people who don't want a dress watch or who don't really want something as formal as conservative but still want the quality as a lange so it gives lange license to have a bit more fun with the dials with the colors to do something they don't normally do i think they've already broken ground in making this watch i just hope they keep pushing the envelope a little bit more as to what a lange can be so that's definitely an opportunity another one is in materials personally i would have liked to see this come out in titanium right away i think it would have been a good way to differentiate it again from the usual suspects and also because when you look at something like this, it's all about bringing something new. So doing it in titanium or some sort of unique alloy like what they do with their honey gold, I think that was an opportunity that they missed, but definitely not one that they can't recover. And then the last opportunity I'd like to see with, taken with this watch is two-tone. Lange, again, doesn't do a two-tone, so I'd love to see what a two-tone honey gold and steel would look like, or see if they come up with some other alloy or some other combination in order to add some more diversity to this line. But either way, this is a brand new line for Lange. I think it was a good attempt. They made sure not to hit anyone's fears, and I just hope that they keep developing this line so they can improve it and make it even better. But of course, that's all just my opinion. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below, so please do let me know what you think of the Odysseus, what you think they did well, what you think they could improve, and what you'd like to see from the line in future. And of course, if you like the video, please do like it and share it. And of course, make sure you check out at Shaluso on Instagram as well to see new pictures. Check out shaluso.com for articles and write-ups. And last but not least, if you want to keep seeing new watch content, make sure you subscribe to Shaluso as well. In any case, thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you on the next one.